some of you may find this subject disturbing. August 28, 1975. A rancher in Portales, New Mexico, finds a calf dead in his field. Its udders and colon are removed with surgical precision. FBI files show a month later, 350 miles to the north, a bull is found in Colorado with no tongue, testicles, penis, or rectum. Officer Gabe Valdez with the New Mexico State Police wrote the FBI in 79. He estimated 8,000 animals, mostly cattle, some horses too, were mutilated in the western U.S. over the previous few years. Valdez believed it was the work of a clandestine operation, either by the CIA or the Department of Energy, for research into biological warfare. He was no slouch. The officer oversaw all mutilation investigations in New Mexico and came to that conclusion after helicopters were consistently seen near cattle. Valdez also believed he was given the runaround file show by the DOE's Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, who found evidence of tranquilizers and anticoagulants, but tried to cover it up. The archives are full of U.S. senators writing to the FBI asking for intervention. But it wasn't a federal offense, and they mostly stayed on the sidelines. Well, FBI, if you're watching, we found something. We cover unnoticed declassified files. Subscribe to join us. In 1988, a remote viewer with the Defense Intelligence Agency's Project Sunstreak took a look. She was only given the target coordinates of a mutilation Valdez studied, nothing else. The site was open, dry, and warm, reminding her of Nevada at night. It had a circular, marked area that felt like death, she said. Loud machine noises were present, and a group of men were waiting to do something orchestrated or planned, something induced in the circle that caused death. She experienced what remote viewers call analytic overlay. Her analytical mind interpreted the target to look like chemical weapons and military. We learn little else about these men. Besides the observation, they came from a facility 50 to 100 miles away with underground floors, buildings with a strong sense of security, secrecy, hiding, and illegal activities. She experienced other overlays of biowarfare, helicopters, the military, and scientists. We also found documented evidence a military contractor allegedly operating on a remote Indian reservation was interested in a bioresearch company that specialized in cattle and horses. This file was found buried in the papers of Danny Casolaro, an investigative reporter found dead in a bathtub in 1991. Casolaro was working on a story he called The Octopus, alleged connections he uncovered between international arms dealers, money laundering, and the Reagan administration, described as far worse than Watergate. Many of Casolaro's notes went missing after he died, and the ones that remain are incomplete. But those available center on this, Cabazon Arms, an alleged joint venture between the Cabazon Band of Mission Indians and Wackenhut Corporation. The tribe owns land in Riverside County, California, and is headquartered in Indio. Wackenhut was a highly regarded government contractor for many decades, with deals to guard nuclear test sites and the Kennedy Space Center. Here is an internal CIA memo discussing sending retirees to work there in 1968. Casalaro's archive, now online, contains many apparent Cabazon Arms and Wackenhut documents, presumably given to him by a source whose name died with him in 91. It contains startling information. Like here, where the manufacturing of an assault weapon on the reservation is mentioned. Several governments, which meet the U.S. State Department approval, have stated their needs for this, it writes. Or here, where a Wackenhut memo from 81 describes potentially using Cabazon land to manufacture cartridge cases for sale to the U.S. Army and NATO. There are several benefits to using Cabazon land, it writes. An arid climate, remote location, workforce, transportation routes, and lack of opposition by adjacent governing bodies. The memo also expresses the potential of nearby tribal lands for a large-caliber weapons range test site, 
including tests of a railgun. Most notable to us, and overlooked by everyone else, are details on the Stormont project. Here, Stormont Laboratories, described as horse and cattle blood typing services, writes a Cabazon subcontractor about an upcoming visit and military application plan. Another paper describes Stormont as a possible manufacturer of a bioweapons detection kit. Presumably, Cabazon Arms was interested in a partnership. And that is where the paper trail stops. Stormont was founded in 1981 to analyze genetic markers in horses and cattle. We are in no way implying they were involved in the mutilations. The dates don't line up. Likewise, nothing in Casalaro's archive suggests Cabazon or Wackenhut were testing anything a thousand miles to the east near the mutilations. But a military contractor working with a reservation to test weapons away from public scrutiny with a special interest in bio-research is interesting. The fact that Cabazon Arms even existed in the first place makes us wonder, what other contractors are out there operating in secluded areas in the American West, operating in the gray area between the government and private sector? If Officer Valdez was correct when he speculated a clandestine CIA or DOE operation was responsible, could that explain why mutilations continue today with seemingly no federal interest? Throughout the 70s, three sitting U.S. senators asked the Bureau to intervene. One, Harrison Schmidt of New Mexico, described the cattle deaths as organized interstate criminal activity. Missing organs, ears, lips, and completely drained blood. The Bureau was clearly aware, as this memo shows. In mid-79, the director of the FBI wrote the Albuquerque field office, recommending a local investigation. However, six months later, they wrote back, noting the mutilations suddenly stopped when they started looking into it, so they closed the case. By 1980, the assistant U.S. attorney wrote there was no more federal interest. There's a little more to the story, too. Kenneth Rommel, an FBI agent who retired to work the investigation for the local DA, sent powder flakes to the Bureau's forensics lab for analysis. The flakes, he wrote, came from a UFO sighting in an area where mutilations occurred. In 78, the unidentified object was seen by a resident of Taos, New Mexico, hovering over a pickup truck. The next morning, the flakes were found on the roof of the truck. A month later, the lab tested them and concluded they were white enamel paint typical of an acrylic latex or exterior house paint. The manufacturer could not be determined. No other connections between UFOs and mutilations are in the files. And in fact, many were convinced of human involvement because they could identify the craft. Here, a Colorado senator says helicopters with U.S. Army markings were seen near some mutilations. And here, a senator from Nebraska encloses a newspaper article on unauthorized helicopters to the FBI. Officer Valdez told reporters he thought helicopters were airlifting the cattle to other locations, working on them, and then returning them. You could tell where these clamps or wires were attached, he said. What do you think? Who could be doing this? And why? We don't know. But the mutilations were definitively happening and continue to happen to this day. And the American West certainly has the space for secret experiments, human or otherwise, to take place. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks again for all of your support. Most of our views come from outside YouTube, so even if you find just one friend or family member to subscribe, it helps spread awareness of this information. Special thank you to our Patreon supporters, including Zach. If you like what we do, consider joining them on Patreon and help us produce one new episode every week. Thanks again. See you next time.